Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to set up a contact form and make it work properly in ASP.NET Core web application. The front end is already set up, so in this tutorial I'll focus more on the back end part and at the end we will have an actual email sent through the form. So let's get started. So the website you saw before is actually this code and I have a form where when this form is being submitted, it will run as a post request. And inside the form, I have this input called name, and I have another input called email, and a third input called message. And at last we have the submit button. The only extra thing that we need to add to this code is two extra messages to tell if the email is successfully sent or if it failed. But now let's go to the backend. So in this file, I just made this public void on post method that will be triggered when a post request is made. And inside this on post method, we want to get the name, the email address and the message that the user inputted in the form. So inside this on post method, we want to get the name the email address and the message that the user has inputted in the form. So the way we will do it is that we, we will write var and say name and that should be equal to request.form and you can see it will automatically suggest name. So we will just hit tab two times and actually we will do the same with the email address and the message. So we can just hit Control C, Control V two times, and let's edit this to email. And again, this was actually called email address. So we can copy this, and that was the name. And again, the message, it's the name of the message, and we will put it inside here. And we can also just call this message. So now just to keep it simple, I will actually make an another method inside here called, uh, let's say public void and say send mail and close it. And this method will take the name and the email and the message as parameters. And let's just copy and paste this because we want to execute the method when we run this on post. So we can put it in here. And of course we need to give them a type. So let's say string and string and string. So the first thing we want is that we want this called mail message. And let's just call it message. And that should be equal to a new mail message. And then we need to include it in our project so we can see show potential fixes. And as you can see, we want this using system.net.mail. And the second thing we want is a SMTP client. So we will type SMTP client. And we can just hit tab twice because it already knows what we want. So now we can use this message variable to tell where the email is from and who is it to and fill the body of the email. So we're doing it by saying message and say dot and the from. So who is this from? And in my case, it will be, we have to, to write new mail address. And inside here, I want to use my own no reply mail. So I say no reply and set bit dot check. So now the email will be from this email. And then the next thing is that we want to say who this message is to. So we will say to and then write add. And in this case, it's a little bit special because it's a form on our own website and we don't want the email to go to, you know, the client or the 
customer. So we just wanted to go to our own, maybe call admin mail or something. So I will just call it admin and then say setbit.tech. But no, uh, let's actually write my own email because then we can test it a little bit better like this and then we want to write a subject on the email so let's say message and subject and that should be equal to just something that we know uh, let's just say test email and now we want to say that the body should be html so let's say is body html and we set it to true and now we can actually type the whole body so message dot body and inside here it's actually html now so let's try to make a opening tag and a clothing tag with a paragraph and inside here we want to concatenate the uh, the name of the person who wrote this email and again we want also the email and the message so if we just copy and paste this just hit a plus sign and again then we will get the email and the message and to make it a little bit more clear we can type name here and we can type email and we can type message and we have to close it off so now we want to configure the SMTP client so the way we do it is that we use the variable that we we made and we will say what port is it and in my case I use simply.com so I will use the port of 587 and in this case you you have to know your own hosting provider what port they're going to use so but they have documentation on it or else you have to write to them to ask and the next thing we want to configure is the SMTP client host and in my case it's uh, smtp.simply.com and remember, if you use this, then it will not work because you need to have a account at simply.com. Uh, so you need to use your own uh, hosting provider. But the next step will be to configure the SSL. So we say enable SSL and we say true. And then we want uh, to configure the credentials. So let's say use default credentials. It should be set to false and then next we have to type the actual credential that we want to use so we say credentials and that should be equal to new network credential and actually here we also have to import this so show potential fixes and using system.net and inside here we want to fill out the um, the username and the password so i will just blur them out so you can't see my credentials and again you really need to have your own credentials to your own hosting provider but now we're almost done we just need two configurations more and the first one is delivery method and we, we will use this smtp delivery method and then say dot network and at final we have the send method and what do we want to send we want to send the message so at last we will just say return true so if all this is going well then just return true and then we also have to say that it will return a bull and of course i messed it up a little bit because we have uh, two variables with the same name we have a string message and then we have this message so i will just take this message and call it message one and the only place we use it is down here so 
this will be this one. But now let's try to open the application and see if the contact form is working. So now let's try this out. This is the contact page and I will just type something random. And just something and we say send email. And then I will go to check my email. And there it is. So I actually received the email from the website. So now if someone wants to contact me directly in the on the contact page, I have their name, I have the email so I can answer, and they have sent a message so I can see what they want. But now I think we should move to the last part of the video, uh, and it's where we want to get some uh, reply to the user who's actually using this contact form so they know that the email has been sent because right now it's just very static and uh, you know when you type name email and message and hit send it will just remove them all and you have absolutely no idea if the email has been sent so now i will try to give a response to the user that is inputting something in the form to tell if it's sent or if it failed so the way i will do it is to make a property called is sent so we make this public string is sent and with a get and a set so the next thing is to make a try catch and we will put this send mail method inside this try catch because if this one fails then we will set is sent to failed but if it succeeds we can set it to sent so now the final thing we have to do is to go into the html file and actually make the two paragraphs that should be shown either if it's sent or if it failed so the way we can do that is that uh, i will do it under the form and we say if the model is sent equals to send then we will make a paragraph and let's style this with some green so we say color green and let's say the email is sent and the next thing is actually just to copy and paste this And then we say that this is failed and we want a red color. And we say the email failed to send. So let's try to test this. So now I am on the contact page and I have write in some random stuff. And if I say send email, it will actually say the email is sent. But if we now try to make this go wrong, I will go into the code and edit my password so it's no longer correct. Uh, then we can get a, a, a failed version of, of the code. And I will just, in the password, you cannot see it, but I will add some extra characters so now it's wrong. And actually we don't want to throw this, we just want to say that it failed. And let's run the application again. And now when I have filled this in and I say send email, it will take a little more longer time because it failed. So that's a way you can make a contact form in ASP.NET Core application. And if you like the video, please subscribe and like the video. And then I will see you next time.